Okay, welcome everyone. I'm going to discuss Monero's vulnerability response process. So every project, every company, every, every one should have some sort of process in response to any vulnerabilities in their software, hardware, or whatnot. Um, why? Well, because you don't want to endanger the end user and because a lot of the times it's a false positive and um, sometimes you just need good collaboration. You need something uh, to create order and chaos, um, theoretically. So this is what Monero does. Um, now, before I came along, there was nothing, and there was nothing. So I went ahead and took my work from Java I2P, brought it over to Monero, we hacked on it, and we essentially came up with this d uh, document, uh, loosely defined, and we essentially follow it. But uh, here you can find it at the meta repo. That's so GitHub Monero project slash meta. It's right on the front, um, the root directory. Uh, it begins with the preamble essentially saying what this VRP applies to, as well as the uh, lovely bounty we have. We do supply bounty for all these hackers, and we pay uh, exclusively in XMR, Monero. Um, what is that, like a Disneyland or something? I keep trying to put the thing going back and forth. Okay, uh, so a code implementation is seen in Monero project repositories, you know, all these almost pseudo legalese it's I, I don't think it's legally binding but it's something to keep us all on track so uh the we, it, this also applies to research people keep forgetting um you know it's not always about the code there's a lot of research and there's a lot of math and there's a lot of moving parts to this and it's all applicable to this process and of course here's here's the thing that you know there's a lot of trust involved we assume that people are not going to exploit this exploit or uh, vulnerability uh, because of, we're assuming that they're nice enough to come and report it so they're not going to exploit it. Um, so th anyway, we reiterate, you know, try not to do that, try not to abuse it. And here's what like people don't get, all right, the live sites are not in scope. So if you want to report some uh, cross-site scripting thing on the forum for the millionth time, it's not applicable. Please don't email. Please don't hacker one us. Okay. Um, here we go. We got bounty, and and as I said, it's uh, well, well, a bounty is not eligible to people who do not follow this process. And I'll talk about a couple of those people um, who made a poor decision. Now, Covery is currently uh, we follow the currently does not follow this process or hacker one, which I'll talk about. No bounty available. Uh, for recovery, just go to GitHub or email me or or anyone or here on this points of contact for security issues. So we got Rick and Luigi for Clyde GUI website and for the Monero Clyde GUI, I got Monero, Monero Moo here and of course there's me. Um, and we essentially make up the response team. So it's a semi-trusted or hmm, trusted group within the community that handles these reports, these incoming things, and we disperse as appropriate, we collaborate as appropriate. Um, I don't always get credit, but I do work with Monero Moo on a, on a handful of patches that do make it in Monero, but it's part of my job, whatever. Um, and so here's the next step. I mean, we get, so we get the, the uh, message, or we get the HackerOne report. We essentially have incident response. Uh, you know, they have two methods to contact us. They could use HackerOne, hackerone.com slash Monero, or send us an email. And there are reasons why I want to get rid of email. Um, I'll point that out in the next tab. And so here's the, I mean, you can just review it yourself in your own free time. Whole bunch of stuff. To establish the severity of the vulnerability, assuming it is a vulnerability. Um, that's what we collaborate on and respond accordingly. And this is la -da 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 -da. And then we have a post-release process. We're pretty loose about this right now because um, nothing has been insane. There's no, nothing been incredibly, I mean, well, relatively speaking. Nothing uh, CVE worthy, if you will. If you believe in using CVE, we haven't actually done any of that. We could. I don't know. Maybe Howard has ideas on that. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of whatever at this point. <laughs> Um, so we have that post release, and of course, bounty is optional. You know, you, you can you can do all this and say no thanks. I don't want bounty. Uh, that was one excuse from one person who 
I'll point out in a minute. Um, so we go down here. It's pretty rough. Ah, here we go. Bounty distribution. So, so here's our little, um, here's our math for this. Um, you know, at most you'll receive 10% of each category. So 10% of 60% of the total bounty amount for high severity bugs. And it tears on down to low. And it's somewhat subjective. And we've had no complaints. Uh, no, there's been one complaint, but I'll talk about that too. So I got to move on to running out of time. Um, incident analysis, something we'd like to do more of once we start getting some um, actually more useful reports and not uh, website, cross-site scripting, et cetera. Um, more collaboration, isolating code base, auditing, which is kind of, actually auditing, we're kind of, it's an ongoing thing with the MRL, the research lab, um, getting the BP audits done, for example. But there was nothing actually like exploitable that drove that to happen. It's just kind of a you know research thing. And the resolutions, um, essentially, I just go on Arm and Arrow and, and post what happened, and here's a summary, and here's the link to HackerOne. And continuous improvement. What can we do to improve the process? Um, well, you know, we need more time to work that out. So let's go to HackerOne.com slash Monero. And here's the policy. You'll go to it. You want to report something. Look, do not submit CR, uh, CSRF XSS related reports. They will be closed as not applicable. And I can't tell you how many we get because it's a, it's a lot. I don't have the number, but it's a lot. And they don't get it. They don't read. They don't pay attention. So let's check out the hacktivity. Here are all the reports that were submitted. Ooh, so we got constant time comparison is not always implemented. Critical areas are vulnerable to key timing attacks by yours truly. Trusted daemon check fails and proxy through Torsox, et cetera, et cetera. These are actually useful things. You know, these are actual bugs that can be exploited and were responsibly disclosed and patched, and they received bounty. And, you know, very happy customers, and we're happy they uh, were responsible about it. Um, all of these out of bounds, buffer out of bounds, blah, 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 blah. And this is the problem one. This was the first one. <laughs> How many months ago? That was eight months ago. Yeah, this guy wanted $100,000 of XMR, or he thought he would get it, for a one-line patch to pre-alpha recovery code. 100000 At the time, I mean, that was when XMR was like $200. Um, so, of course, that, that kind of triggered me. And you can read the thread. It's pretty funny. Um, but uh, aside from that, one case, we have all these, uh, it was great. We have all these reports and you, you can hear, well, you know, uh, what, where's a good one? Where's the Torsox one? There we go. So, you know, reporter puts a summary, description, releases affected, steps to produce, possible solutions. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Thanks. Blah, blah, blah. Try this. Okay, well, try this. Oh, okay. And then it works out. And then, you know, send us your address. We'll send you money. And then they get it. So, so far, so good, right? I mean, there have been problem people, though, who do not believe in this process. Um, we don't have sound. I was going to play some Hachaturi on the saber dance to go with this. If you don't, if you don't know that piece, you know, it's the, I won't sing it for you. But it's fun. Okay. Uh, where are we? Um, wait. Uh, any questions so far? Any questions? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, they have to provide the, well, they have to at least report it, and it has to be verifiable as a vulnerability. They don't necessarily have to provide a patch. Personally, I want proof of concept, but they can't do that, but that's just me. So far, um, like I think this report, I don't see a single diff or anything, just some ideas on how to resolve it. And Monero Moo goes in and actually provides the patch, and then we say thank you, give them the bounty. Now, this is based roughly on this amount. This is our, um, the total bounty we have available. And from that pool, we deduce you know, the various percentages per, per tier, which we deem to be low, medium, or high vulnerabilities. And that is uh, semi-defined within this process. Um, where is, 
It is. Um, here we go. Wait, no, sorry. Um, what is it? Um, well, it's in here. I promise it's in here. If you see it, yeah. Um, public. Yes, if yes, if you go to the uh, meta repo. M E T A. Another question, sorry. Somebody, yes. Team selected. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, it, well, it's right now. It's a static group of people: myself, uh, Fluffy Pony, Luigi, and Monero Moo. Uh, the the uh, uh, most trusted, most. I mean, we've been around for years. We don't screw around. We don't have time for that. Um, the uh, most knowledgeable, if you will. Uh, and there's been zero complaints so far. We're, we're always open to ears and comments and criticism. So. Okay, so we just showed you. Um, okay, so that's the total amount we have available. Okay, uh, here's the security advisor. Here's what I told you after we do the reports. You know, uh, we want to get it out there. Hey, Monero's very active in res being responsible and being honest about hey, this happened. It happened at this time. We'll we'll just you know this is always this is development. You got to take it and move on. So here's a summary I just recently did, and it has all the links, so it's, it's totally open, and you know that we're a, as active as possible. And that's on Reddit or Monero. And so the question, let's see, I wanted to cherry pick some of this, is why, so the question is, why don't you just take emails? Why are you using HackerOne? Uh, isn't that, like, dangerous? Isn't that, I mean, what if they're working with the NSA or, or what have you? Um, and that's a really good question. Has anyone like thought of that question? Has that crossed anyone's mind? Like, why are we using HackerOne? Anyone? Okay. Okay. Here we go. What did I say? I know, having this very lovely discourse here. Um, yes. So essentially, people uh, they they want to go f if they have to go forth with the effort of creating an account, um, they'll. <laughs> They, 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 they hope that people won't publicly see what they're trying to scam, for example. See, if, for example, if someone emails us saying, you know, hey, I, have, uh, I found this extreme exploit. It's going to crash the network. You have 30 days to give me bounty or I'm going to destroy the world, right? Um, they can say it. But, you know, where's the proof, first of all? But they can also release that, for example, to the media. They can say, well, Monero's has this huge exploit, and I'm just going to screw them over if they don't pay me. And yeah, it's, you know, it's a bad move and what have you. But then you have 30 days of wondering. And then you have 30 days of speculators. And that does, you know how that works out. So if we were to force HackerOne, they essentially act as a third party. I mean, it's intentionally, we want that third party uh, observation so they can they can say hey no this is this is for, this is either a real exploit provide that proof of concept or it's not you're full of it this is a scam so that's probably one of the bigger reasons why we don't we prefer hacker one over email and I would say get rid of email altogether than various other reasons so I discussed that now let's talk about a few of the uh, Problem people. So these are people that, well, I think I already pointed out, yeah, this one, this is the uh, 20,000, 200,000, whatever. So that was a problem person. But here's, here's, a, here's a case of irresponsible disclosure. <laughs> Our lovely friend FireEyes UK, I'm sure he's watching this. <laughs> so, I, I guess his argument was, okay, so I mean, I don't, really don't want to glorify this guy at all, but essentially, you can judge for yourself, I believe his argument was um, he didn't want to report it responsibly because he didn't want bounty. Well, that makes absolutely zero sense because you can just say no thanks on the bounty, as I did with the constant time comparison. I'm just like, whatever, I'm, I'm paid anyway, this is too tricky, just whatever fix it. Uh, but that was his argument, supposedly. And if I'm interpreting his 
his his statement. And of course, he cherry picks, right? He cherry picks the one bad report we had where the guy wanted 200,000. Says it as, you know, that's the reason because these guys are such a-holes and they're such evil people. I'm so innocent and I'm so I'm just going to publicly disclose this and because I'm elite and you are not. So, if, I mean, I haven't followed the thread, honestly, after, oh, look, someone thumbs down it. Oh, GitHub. Oh, okay, we got an unhappy customer there. But this goes on. You can read the thread. It's resolved. It's, it was resolved. So, uh, in another case, and this is funny, this is what the MRL folks had to deal with, was this, like a tweet. Okay, that's, that's just, like, very irresponsible, because you don't know what can come from a tweet. Uh, you don't, first of all, you don't even know if it's applicable. Secondly, you don't know how much damage it can do, if any at all. There's no discussion. There's no, it's, it's just like this embracing of egos, essentially, how I'm interpreting it. Um, you know, look at me, look at me, look at this. And I'm thinking, you know, this is just, everything's going to be broken at any point. It's, it's just, this is how it is. It's not a huge deal. So let's not make it a big deal. Let's try to streamline, streamline this so we can move on and do other things with our life. And I believe this was resolved. I'm, uh, the Nothers can, uh, clear. yes, absolutely. So they, uh, they can clarify further if you want to talk to them. Um, so those were just a couple of the bad cases. And you saw some of the good cases, I think. I mean, those are the links I have. Any questions? Yes. How you manage uh, duplicates, if any of them? I mean, you use both emails and hacker one. Why not hacker one? Why okay, not so just you hacker one? the first part of the question before the microphone? Yeah. Uh, uh, why do you, how do you deal uh, with duplicates? Because you have like two entry points to your bug bounty program, and why you just don't use only hacker one? That's a great question, and that's why I want to I want to get rid of that one entry point of email. Um, I personally haven't get it, gotten any emails about Cobri, but um, I don't uh, have access to the you know, Fluffy Ponies email and whatever emails they get, I don't know. And that's actually kind of cool because although we're a team, we're a decentralized team. So it's not 100% trusted. We're not like a cabal of people working together to you know, manipulate things. I don't have access to everything. They don't have access to everything. Um, so that's actually a, a convenient thing. Um, but why don't we do that? We haven't fully discussed it yet. Um, I would like to remove that point. Did I answer the question? Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You had how did how did how did what? Deal with duplicates. Oh, uh, patiently and politely, um, or at this point, I'm just copy and pasting. Um, you know, uh, read the policy, and I could close close the report because I, you know, they're they're not reading the policy duplicates most of the time. Well, no, okay, I see what you mean. Okay, how? They're the only, actually, the only instance of duplicates were with uh, the recent one, uh, the, the, not the double spend, it's the, uh, the uh, what's, what, what's the, short, the short end of it? Did you do the public key? The yes, yes, yeah. So uh, a couple of people, but it turned out that uh, detailed, if you look at the details, they weren't actually duplicates, so we actually rewarded each researcher on a per issue basis. Um, but we haven't found any duplicates of actually useful code. The duplicates are all like website, cross-site stuff. So just close the report. Okay. Well, if you want to discourage email, could you post um, PGP keys on the HackerOne account and encourage uh, encrypted submissions? I'm sorry, could you repeat that again? Sure. I can't um, hear anything up here. No. Do you want to encourage encrypted submissions on HackerOne if you want to get rid of the email contact? How would you uh, encrypt? I mean, what, what kind of... PGP. Of just post like a PGP key on the, on the HackerOne disclosure page. Did you, I'm sorry, I did not hear. Oh, like po post a PGP key on the... Oh, uh, PGP. Yeah, on the... Um, oh, within HackerOne. Yeah, yeah. Just on oh. the disclosure page. Sure, sure. Um, that would... But that would... Def I mean, that would... I'm assuming you, you mean within the report? Yeah, if there's a concern that um, the platforms have been compromised by intelligence and they've got access to the... Uh, non-public reports. Well, that, that, and that's another thing. We're actually assuming that they are compromised. We're actually, in a certain sense, hoping they are, because that gives us incentive to resolve this quickly. Mm. It also gives a certain legal binding to them uh, mm. if they, as a business if they don't follow through with their code. Uh, the, I mean, that, that was actually one of the threats there. But then, of course, the argument for that is, well, 
they, uh, they can comply with alphabet agency, but they don't have to disclose it. Okay, well, you have all these what ifs, so we just have to assume it's compromised, and we need to use that to our advantage to prevent scammers and, and whatnot. Uh, so if we used PGP, for example, that would essentially be like email, in my opinion. We see the reporter could be from anywhere and wherever encrypting something. They can't see the message. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. So that, I think that's why we don't. Okay. Sure. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, one more. Yeah, I'm curious, where, where does the, the, I guess, the pool of your bounty, uh, your yes, bounty pool yes, come from? Is that don donation-based? Yes, thank you. It is entirely donation-based. We've raised, like, a, a lot of bounty from the community, just people who want to contribute, so they, so they give them an arrow. And there's, yeah, there's no uh, company backing, there's no agency backing that I know of. Um, it's all paid in Monero anyway, so untraceable. Yeah. Cool. All right. Do we have time for one more question or any more? One more question? Okay, one last question. Thank you. Uh, do you actually uh, proactively try to find uh, exploitation attempts for vulnerabilities that wasn't disclosed? Uh, on what? I'm sorry? That vulnerabilities that if you have a, do you have a, pro a proactive approach to discover um, non-disclosed uh, vulnerabilities that are actively exploited? Oh, okay. Uh, me personally, I mean, I mean, that's kind of part of development. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm not sure if I'm understanding the question. We, we're always trying to find these. Oh, you mean like uh, heuristics and analysis and network monitoring? Yeah, and, yeah. And oh, like well, that, uh, not within this process. Not yet. I mean, that's something to, to think about. But that kind of goes in the realm of development and research. And this is more of just streamlining a, something really simple and reporting, essentially. OK, thank you all very much. All right, let's give, whoa, this is pretty loud. Let's give Anonymal a hand. Thanks so much for coming up here. Um, and if you have any more questions for him, he should be hanging out back at that table. And he can be talking about Kaveri and also this vulnerability response process.